For more on the crisis in Syria, I'm joined by Tony Gosling, an investigative journalist based in the UK who writes extensively on Middle East issues. So the Arab League has also decided to halt all diplomatic cooperation with Syria's government, putting it effectively into further isolation. What do you think would be the consequences of such unanimity in the Arab world against the uh, Assad regime? Well, I don't think that those regimes really represent the individuals in those uh, specific countries. I mean, the Arab League now has become almost simply a tool of the West because most of the most powerful countries in there are very much under the Western petrodollar influence, and they don't represent their people either. They're monarchies, almost all of them. Uh, they also have horrendous human rights records, so I don't think that the Arab League really represents the Arab people in any way nowadays. Let's not forget also in December and January, we had an Arab League uh, sponsor investigation into Syria looking at exactly what was going on. Uh, the only trouble is that hasn't surfaced that report except on the internet because it was leaked. The reason for that is that it didn't come up with what the Western Arab leaders and the Western press wanted to hear, which was first of all that there are all sorts of uh, third forces within Syria who are killing people. Uh, these are armed gangs, armed groups running around uh, and causing a lot of these civilian deaths rather than as we keep hearing the uh, Syrian forces. The other thing is media lies, very simple. Uh, the Arab League went round Syria and they were finding that the, the, the attacks we were being told about here in the West on our TV night after night simply hadn't happened, many of them. Uh, and so what we're seeing is, is a really uh, quite a horrendous situation in Syria. Certainly it looks to me as if NATO are trying to just simply uh, replay the script that they wrote for the Libyan uprising, but I don't think that that's going to happen. And also let me say that I I don't think there will be a sort of peaceful intervention by the UN in any way at the moment because those free Syrian army rebels and indeed Al-Qaeda has very strong links to the West. It was the West that originally created Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan and also we've got a very strange element going on and that is that many of the fighters within Syria believe that they're part of some sort of prophetic force from the Quran that will move things forward for a sort of unified state, a caliphate fate in that part of the world and they're looking for a, 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 an Islamic leader that's not Assad. So many of these uh, fighters within Syria are actually playing into the hands of NATO. NATO has been really ruthless in manipulating their beliefs in order to get them to fight the Assad regime. So we're looking at a, really a two-track thing. One is an official policy which is uh, at least to try and attempt to get negotiations but the unofficial policy is constant covert attacks against the Assad regime. Uh, and I mean the I don't think there's hardly anybody in Syria itself that really uh, supports these armed gangs running around the streets. Now, the Pentagon says it's weighing up a theoretical military action in Syria. What do you make of that? Well, it's absolutely not acceptable without a United Nations Security Council resolution, which the Chinese and the Russians have blocked, quite rightly, in my view. Uh, the last thing we need is a, a massive intervention in that part of the world. Assad has made it absolutely crystal clear. If there is an intervention in Syria, he will then attack Israel. This is just exactly what Saddam Hussein did back during the first Gulf War, back in the early 1990s. And you'll see that if that does happen, this will massively up the game and there will be a horrendous, possibly even nuclear exchange in the Middle East, which could be the, the first shots of a third world war. So I think if the West does inter intervene in that way, uh, it, it is absolutely inexcusable, totally inexcusable. And it shows that they have absolutely no regard for the international rule of law. All right, how can the stance of the Arab League against the Syrian regime, do you think, affect the potential negotiation process in Syria that Russia and China are pushing for? Well, I think the Arab League needs to make it absolutely clear, first of all, that the West and NATO should stop uh, supporting these rebels. Let's not forget that the head of the so-called Free Syrian Army is actually a Libyan man who spent much of his time living in Ireland. He's very uh, close to the Western security services. And I think the Arab League needs to make sure that there's a severing of the link between NATO and the Western security services and, uh, and the so-called Free Syrian Army. The other thing is we need 
absolute guarantees that there aren't covert operations going on by Western uh, special forces now around and within Syria. So I think the Arab League needs to get tough with the West uh, in order to bring peace and also to tell these free Syrian army people that there must be nego a negotiated peace, a negotiated settlement. That is the, actually the only way to save the Syrian people and to save that part of the world at the moment it seems. And the West it seems unfortunately is hell-bent on more conflict in Syria and replaying the horrendous situation that's now in Libya. Let's not forget in Libya we've now got roughly 10,000 political prisoners. If there was an election tomorrow, the Libyan people would almost certainly vote for Saif Gaddafi. But of course he's in jail and he's not even allowed to stand. Anybody that supports Gaddafi now in Libya uh, is, is being rounded up, tortured and imprisoned. So, I mean, that is not the sort of situation we want to see in Syria uh, at all. And I think we need to be really focused now on Libya, even though it's fallen off the news agenda as to what's happened there. We don't want that happening in Syria. All right. Investigative journalist Tony Gosling, thanks for your time.